Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to this year's Blue Cloud Gala. I'm James Heimowitz, president of China Institute, and it's a delight to welcome you all to what promises to be an extraordinary evening, full of entertainment, fun, and a great way to celebrate Chinese New Year with us, and a great way for us to celebrate our five honorees and the amazing history and future of China Institute. Many of you know us already. China Institute was founded in 1926. We've done so many different things in nearly our century of history, but we've always been true to helping Americans better understand China through its art, through its culture, education, and business. Tonight, we're joined by five extraordinary honorees. It's going to be really a fun evening. Here in New York, we have our own vice chair, An Le Chung, who's been instrumental in helping China Institute grow. In Shanghai, we have the fashionable Tsai Chin Ching. And joining us from Hong Kong, which is a bridge to China in and of itself, we have Kung Fu icon Jackie Chan and the illustrious Ronnie Chan and Charles Lee. It promises to be an amazing evening. China Institute has enjoyed support from so many people and so many institutions in so many different places. It's too many to really mention. But this evening, we are joined by a few very important friends who would like to share some thoughts with you now. I'm Gail Brewer, Manhattan Borough President, and I'm delighted to join you in celebrating the China Institute and all the China Institute does to increase understanding of China's history, China's art, and China's culture. For nearly a century, the Institute has brought life to all of China's complexity and dynamism through educational series, art exhibits, and business programs. On the occasion of the 2021 Blue Cloud Gala, and on behalf of the Borough of Manhattan, congratulations to the China Institute and tonight's honorees for all of your tireless work. Thank you very much. Dear friends, it's my great pleasure to attend this year's Blue Cloud Gala. I want to congratulate the five honorees who received the 2021 Blue Cloud Award. Your outstanding achievements embody China Institute's mission and commitment, contributing greatly to advance Americans' deeper understanding of China. For nearly a century, China Institute has been actively boosting exchanges and cooperation between our two countries, making great contributions to the development of bilateral relations. This year marks the 95th birthday of China Institute and the 50th anniversary of China-US re-engagement. Let's work together to write a new chapter for the friendship between the two peoples. I wish the gala a complete success. May the Year of the Ox bring you health and happiness. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Council Member Margaret Chen, representing Lower Manhattan. I'm proud to have China Institute in my district. It is my honor to greet tonight's guests at the China Institute's annual Blue Cloud Gala. I also want to extend my congratulation to tonight's honorees. Thank you for all your efforts in promoting a deeper understanding of Chinese culture and history. Good evening to friends in the States and good morning to friends in Asia. Happy Chinese New Year to you all. It is my great pleasure to join the Blue Cloud Gala of the China Institute tonight. First of all, allow me to express my heartfelt gratitude to the China Institute for inviting the Hong Kong Economic and Trade Office to collaborate in organizing the Blue Cloud Gala this year. I would like to congratulate all awardees tonight. I'm especially thrilled to learn that three eminent leaders in the fields of entertainment, business, and finance in Hong Kong are receiving this distinguished honor this evening. Their success stories are of great representation of the vibrancy, energy, and diversity of our city. Hong Kong has always been a premier business center in Asia with our institutional strengths and international vision. Even during these uncertain times, our financial market has continued to demonstrate strong performances. Business aside, I'm sure I will find from among you many fans of our famous Kung Fu movies. 
Tonight, we are also celebrating the beginning of the Year of the Ox after an extremely challenging year of 2020. Ox symbolizes hard work, positivity, and strength in the Chinese zodiac. These are the qualities that we all dearly need as the world recovers from the current crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm convinced that challenges will only bring us closer together. The long-term business, cultural, and family ties between Hong Kong and the States will only grow stronger. Hong Kong was just named the most resilient economy in Asia by the FM Global Index 2020. This is our spirit. We look forward to welcoming you back to Asia's world city in the new year, to do business, to travel, and to have fun. In a little while, you will see a short video clip showcasing the lively arts and cultural scene of Hong Kong. In a young percussion group from Hong Kong, the refined drums will be sharing the joy of the new year with us through their virtual performance. Please stay tuned for the treat. I hope you will enjoy the marvelous light, and I wish you all a happy, healthy, and rewarding year of the Ox. Thank you very much. There is no organization like China Institute. Since 1926, China Institute has worked to help Americans understand China through its people, culture, and history. Founded by Chinese reformers Hu Shi and Guo Pingwen and American educators John Dewey and Paul Monroe, China Institute is the oldest bicultural nonprofit organization in America to focus exclusively on China. The Institute's pillars of education, business, arts, and culture provide pathways to deepen personal passions through the lens of China's past, present, and future. The earliest years of China Institute concentrated on supporting educational exchange between the U.S. and China assisting Chinese students in the United States, and helping New York area educators develop competency in teaching Chinese while exploring Chinese culture. For our local audience, China Institute's tradition of bringing notable Chinese performers and thought leaders stateside provided many their first look at the country's diverse culture and history, while our cooking classes taught generations of Americans to create Chinese dishes in their own home. 
This history still lives on today through the many educational workshops and training programs for teachers throughout the New York City Department of Education and an array of Chinese language, art, literature, and music classes for children as young as two to adults of any age. This next phase of China Institute means an expanded vision where we can offer many dozens of public programs each year around Chinese tradition, business, art, music, the environment, architecture, and so much more. China Institute Gallery, founded in 1966, was the first art gallery dedicated exclusively to Chinese art in the U.S. and has put on more than 100 noteworthy exhibits with all types of Chinese art, treasures often never before seen in the U.S. In 2020, one of our biggest accomplishments was the completion of this amazing 6,000 square foot space, the East China Normal University Center at China Institute. Given everything that went on in 2020, it's even more amazing. It's the only space of its kind in the United States where higher education and higher learning can happen in an independent setting. Now I'd like to give you a quick glimpse into some of the new classroom space. It's really amazing. It's been custom designed for programs here at China Institute, including music, performing arts, and all kinds of different classes. Here's a glimpse of what the new classrooms actually look like. Despite the pandemic, this marks the full build-out of the second floor at our Lower Manhattan headquarters. This area also includes our expanded auditorium to serve as a workshop, lecture, and community space, a performance classroom to accommodate all of our school's movement classes, and classrooms designed for our Music at CI courses. This street-level entry will lead to the development of our future ground floor space, which will become our Center for Contemporary China, offering new digital resources and programs. We will dedicate our new culinary center for cooking classes, pop-up events, and live stream content. The second floor headquarters and Center for Contemporary China are connected by a grand staircase, a physical bridge for all visitors to all facets of China. The future is bright, and we are looking forward to the next phase of our storied history. We hope to welcome you at China Institute online and in person, and thank you for your support. Good evening, everybody. So I'm so lucky to be able to share my thoughts about An Le Chang with you. And I want to thank the China Institute in particular for giving me this opportunity. It's a real honor and it's a real pleasure. Let's start here. So An Le got her MBA at Wharton, went to work at Goldman Sachs, worked at uh, Robert Fleming, SMD, and then started her own family investment firm doing private equity. I was lucky enough to be an investor in one of her funds in China. And uh, it returned in about two years, 50%. So Anla suggested that I take the profits and donate it to the China Institute. <laughs> Never missing a beat, Anla, which I did. There are three things that I think are most important to you. I'd like to share with the group. First, the China Institute. So you bring to that first a worked leader. You roll your sleeves up, you get involved, and then you're a thought leader. You're a visionary for the China Institute. And you share your contacts like Wilbur Ross with the Institute. And then you're a great benefactor for the Institute. In that regard, a leader to all of us. Second thing I think would be your current effort with SubChina. SubChina is a investment letter, newsletter update on China. One of the things that China is most passionate about is U.S.-China relations. 
And this is what that's shining a better light on. It's must reading. It comes out daily. It's in English. It's very relevant and it's very unique. Anil, you have a real winner here. And I see that down the road, Jeff Bezos is gonna buy it from you for astronomical sum. The third thing that I think you are passionate about, no, I know you're passionate about, maybe the most, is your family. Anil, you and Mark are one of my favorite couples. You're amazing together. You have a great relationship and you're great to be with. With that, you have two terrific children, Jessica, who is already a well-regarded filmmaker and doing films, as you might guess, about China. And Jason, uh, who has already been spent much time in China, is now at Harvard Business School. So I'd like to thank all of you for letting me share these thoughts with you on Anla Chang. And if you let me <laughs> Uh, make a toast to you, Anla. Here's to you, uh, the China Institute, uh, sub-China, and to your wonderful family. Here, here. Thank you, Ed, for those very kind remarks, your leadership as a fellow trustee, and of course, your dear friendship. I have always believed that education is fundamental for a better future. And from a young age, my diplomat father instilled in me the significance of positive relations between the U.S. and China. Today, we have a new administration, and what better way within the Biden administration to be the bridge between U.S. and China through soft power? And this is precisely what China Institute and my company, SubChina, do to be able to connect U.S. and China together in the best way possible. But this is not a cause just for me or my fellow honorees, all of us, have a role to play in reducing fear of the other. And the best way to do so is through cultural exposure, education, and mutually meaningful dialogue. We are duty bound to build a more harmonious and happiest society. And despite all of the challenges we have faced, I do believe this is very possible. This is also why I founded SubChina, a media, tech, and business platform to deliver news and build deeper connections between China and the planet through the power of the truly World Wide Web. When I think about the history of China Institute, I am taken by its ability to be a bridge builder in so many ways. From its pioneering educational programs for teachers and students, and the many groundbreaking art exhibits, to the work spearheading and sponsoring opportunities to make cross-cultural understanding a force for good, I could not think of a more vital place for the 21st century. I am so very appreciative and humbled to be recognized by my friends at the China Institute this evening and to be amongst this extraordinary group of fellow honorees. Thank you to everyone who have made it possible this evening. Please accept my sincere wishes to all of you tonight for a happy Lunar New Year of the Ox with prosperity, peace, and joy this year and always. The Blue Cloud Gala is just one example of China Institute's commitment to bringing leading figures, ideas, and knowledge around China to its growing audience, with the goal of strengthening the U.S.-China relationship. In 2020, despite the many challenges posed by the pandemic and a pivot to digital-only discussions, it was a monumental year in so many ways for China Institute programs. China Institute launched new series with leading thinkers, including Pieces of China, now in its third season, that kicked off in early January with a program about the history of the Chinese dumpling. The A Taste of China live food and travel programs. A series exploring the Forbidden City at 600, which attracted a record number of attendees. And an executive summit that brought together the most notable arrangement of U.S. and Chinese business leaders. 
The cultural programs and business dialogues that China Institute offers help ensure that thought leaders from the United States and China are still talking to one another, and that Americans are learning that China is about much more than current headlines. China Institute is the only institution in New York devoted solely to deepening understanding of China, and we are playing a crucial role at this time. Soon, China Institute will welcome program attendees to a new auditorium space in which to hold professional, engaging events of all types. China Institute looks forward to a year of the ox that turns the soil of dialogue to produce a bumper crop of programs that provide much food for thought. All of us at China Institute hope to welcome you at a China Institute program soon. Hello again. It's now my privilege to introduce a woman of distinction, elegance, and business savvy, Tsai Jinqing, through her top-level work in consulting as head of Christie's China and now as president of Karen Greater China, home to many of my favorite luxury brands, has truly been an innovator. Her vision is broad and encompasses not only corporate goals but how she can leverage resources and talent to establish partnerships in service of the greater good. Her commitment to sustainability has also served to build a green bridge between China and the U.S. as we combat global warming for the betterment of our shared planet. Outside of her professional roles, Jinqing's board leadership with the New York City Philharmonic Orchestra and Teach for China means that the causes of culture, music, and education also benefit from her experience and insights. It's this special blend of good judgment and good deeds that make her so extraordinary. And spend time with Jinqing, and you will discover that her warmth is only outshined by her accomplishments, which have been achieved through creating the type of engaged clients and relationships that are built on trust, trust and a mutual appreciation for creativity, craft, and culture. Jinqing is the top brass. As well as the gold standard of how to form meaningful connections in business and in life, so it is indeed my pleasure to congratulate her on this well-deserved recognition by China Institute. Congratulations, Jinqing. Thank you, James. Not only for this wonderful introduction, but for all your work and that of China Institute, sharing Chinese culture with the world. When I served as chairwoman at Christie's between 2012 to 2018, I'm fortunate to make my career among beautiful things, pieces that tell the story of China through their creation, and reflect the growing desire among smart collectors to learn more and to own a part of China's most vibrant and diverse history through art. I have the privilege. To have joined the Caring Group as the president of Greater China since September 2018, and I'm dedicated to supporting the long-term development of Caring's luxury houses in Greater China. My mission is to reinforce the visibility of Caring in Greater China and to strengthen the links between the group and our local partners. Sustainability has been a priority for Caring, and very close to my heart as well. We believe sustainability is a necessity, for sustainability and luxury are one and the same. We began our journey 15 years ago, placing sustainability at the heart of our business strategy. I'm eminently proud of these efforts and our results, including a 36% reduction in the level of carrying greenhouse gas emissions between 2015 and 2018, with the goal of making it. 50% by 2025. I urge all of you to simultaneously think creatively and sustainably. This is the new 21st century mindset, 
and it is one that will help make the next century even better than the last. Thank you to China Institute, to my fellow honorees, and to all of you tuning in from America, China, and all points in between. The history of China Institute has always been centered on educating people about China, utilizing its rich and vibrant language, culture, music, and arts. Like a Lunar New Year banquet, CI offers a diverse array of courses for individuals to deepen their knowledge and passions, and educators to strengthen pedagogical skills. From Chinese language classes for toddlers to immersive trips to China for teachers and students, China Institute provides opportunities for everyone to start and continue a lifelong learning journey. Like the ox of this Chinese New Year, CI has proven itself reliable and trustworthy, and this reputation has been cultivated since the school was founded in 1933. As a result, China Institute counts among its partners leading institutions like East China Normal University, who will soon open the new ECNU Center at China Institute on CI's second floor, and the U.S. China Music Institute of the Bard College Conservatory, through whom our Music at CI program offers classes in Chinese instruments and performances of traditional and modern Chinese music. All of us at CI are inspired by the 5,000 years of Chinese culture to help equip today's students with the skills and knowledge they will need to tackle tomorrow's challenges. I'm honored to introduce and to recognize Mr. Charles Lee, whose distinguished career and commitment to the longevity and success of Hong Kong is second to none. In fact, Mr. Lee is one of Hong Kong's biggest boosters, both professionally and personally. As he said in his closing letter to the Hong Kong Exchange after a celebrated 11-year tenure as its chair, quote, Hong Kong has not only enabled me to have an international perspective, but it has also allowed me to keep my Chinese heart. I deeply love and appreciate everything about this city, close quote. In his new role as senior advisor to the board, Mr. Lee will continue to play a guiding role on future developments, and we know all will benefit from his deep leadership and expertise. I've always admired Mr. Lee's ability to think broadly and act definitively. As the previous chairman of JP Morgan China and the past president of Merrill Lynch China, his strategic wisdom propelled each company to regional success. But did you know that before he became a corporate leader, Mr. Lee was an editor and reporter with the China Daily, and he received his master's in journalism from the University of Alabama. And if you can believe it, he also worked on an offshore oil rig. While his career trajectory may be surprising, it is his astute and dedicated leadership that has impressed us most. So on behalf of the China Institute, we appreciate all he has done to further not only economics, financial markets and trade, but perhaps even more importantly, the byproduct of that work has been building the business connections that advance understanding, partnerships, and result in a stronger and more stable international community. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charles Lee. Good morning and good evening. Thank you for giving me this great honor to be one of the winners for the 2021 Blue Cloud Award. I'm particularly proud to receive this honor from the China Institute, an organization that I have really admired for many, many years. China Institute dedicated itself to the building and maintaining of a great friendship between China and the United States. In so many ways, this is the life of my generation as well. Our generation, especially in the last few decades, you know, have really had a tale of two lives, one in America and one in China. Myself, for example, I was born in Beijing, grew up in Gansu, so I'm deeply rooted in China. But when I was young, I, like others in my generation, traveled across the ocean to see America. 
And later on, we all have returned and are trying to build our homeland the way that we saw America, you know, as part of our American dream. So when we returned, we were part of the generation that uh, helped rebuilt and reshaped China. So in many ways, we took great American experience back to China and hoping that we could build a nation that was going to be more like America and allow us to dream and hope. And today, China obviously has been so big and so successful in many ways that part of that dream is realized, but in many others, we are still continue to be working hard trying to find even more common ground for the two great nations. So today our two countries have become the global powers that really define the direction of this world in the next decade and in the many decades beyond that. So America and China are so similar in many ways, but in many, many other ways, we are still so fundamentally different. It is that part that sometimes drives us apart. And I think it's our generation's job and continual responsibility to build greater commonality so that we can all be working together and there's going to be a lot of work that we can do to bridge the gulf that is developing beyond our two great nations. In accepting this award, I'm more determined than ever to help build and strengthen the ties between China and America as these two countries should really be friend and be partners Together, we can lead the world to a better place. Once again, thank you very much. And I'm truly proud to be part of this great mission and this as part of this uh, you know, great ceremony. And I want to thank you. Please have a great 2021.
Hello, I'm Yusai Khan, co-chair of China Institute. Our next honoree needs little introduction. He is an award-winning international action star of global acclaim, and also a prolific screenwriter, director, and choreographer, while also being a singer of renown. You have seen him tumble, fly, jump, kick, and punch his way on the silver screen and defeat some of the most evil villains ever created. I'm talking about the one and most certainly only Jackie Chan. With 150 plus films under his belt, Jackie has pushed himself as far personally as he has done professionally. In 1988, he launched the Jackie Chan Charitable Foundation to help people in a variety of worthy causes, including medical services and disaster relief to aid victims of natural disasters like the Sichuan earthquake, youth scholarships in art performance, providing warm clothing to the elderly, and participating in charity missions around the world. Jackie is also a UNICEF and UNAIDS Goodwill Ambassador. As Jackie once said, even when I'm sleeping, I think how I can help other people. Tonight, we honor Jackie Chan, not only for his dedication to filmmaking, but for the extraordinary work he has done to build stronger ties to and within China and his deep philanthropy, which has made the world a much better place to live. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Jackie Chan. Hello, I'm Jackie Chan. I'm very honored to receive the Blue Cloud Award. and would like to say big thank you to the China Institute for the award. I hope we can continue to extend our love, peace, and compassion to everyone around the world. Thank you again, and stay safe. Bye-bye. Art has always been an organizational pillar of China Institute because Chinese art serves as a chronicle of history, change, and creative expression for American audiences. In 1966, China Institute opened the China Institute Gallery, the first gallery dedicated exclusively to Chinese art in the United States. And the gallery has put on more than 100 exhibits covering all forms of painting, sculpture, photography, textiles, digital, and contemporary art, and more, welcoming many tens of thousands of visitors over the years and revealing the essence of China in the context of 5,000 years of history. Accompanying each exhibition, the gallery's curator lectures and scholarly catalogs provide a deeper understanding of China. Groups discover China through art through the gallery's DCTA program, and the gallery team is always inspired by the smiles of the many public school children and seniors experiencing and creating Chinese art, many for the first time. Art has the ability to inspire and educate, and China Institute's deep commitment to art as a platform for cross-cultural understanding is unique. On behalf of the gallery, please accept personal invitation to tonight's viewers to visit China Institute Gallery when it reopens in spring 2022 with Treasures for Buddha, the legendary offerings from Nanjing Dabuen Temple, bringing art and never before seen in the Western Hemisphere to local audiences. Until then, please join China Institute Gallery Online to experience virtual exhibitions, art activities for children, digital resources, and so much more.
Good evening, everyone. I am Didi Pei, co-chair of China Institute's Board of Trustees. It is my honor to introduce our final honoree for tonight's Blue Cloud Gala, Mr. Ronnie Chan, a man who is an outsized influence in many educational, philanthropic, cultural, and business organizations that it would take until next Chinese New Year to list them all. In the service of brevity, I will say that if there is an organization working to advance education, to improve U.S.-China relations, or foster leadership among professionals, there is a fair chance they have been the beneficiary of Mr. Chan's advice, support, and dedication, and often all three, because they are so inextricably linked in his heart. Needless to say, his chronicle of accolades is most impressive, and tonight we can add the Blue Cloud Award to that expansive list. As chairman of Hanglong Properties, Ronnie Chan is an important figure throughout China in key cities like Shanghai, Tianjin, Wuxi, Dalian, Kunming, Wuhan, and Hangzhou. I had the pleasure and honor to help him with the renovation of the Jianfu Pavilion in Beijing's Forbidden City. For years, he was the chairman of our sister organization, Asia Society, and donated their new building in Hong Kong. His properties are commercial destinations and reflect the incredible growth of China as a country and a marketplace. His understanding of real estate and the consumer makes him a leader unlike any other, and he is among the most responsible for providing outlets that transform societies with goods and services that lift people to the new levels of economic prosperity. So, as we marvel at what China has become, we can thank Ronnie for helping shape this reality. He is a unifier of peoples, a preserver of cultures, and truly a leader who leads other leaders. Most significantly, Ronnie Chan is an individual who never thinks only of himself. His talents of merging power with potential means he always assembles the right teams and finds the best sources for their abilities and interests. We honor Ronnie Chan tonight for his soaring vision, his deep philanthropic contributions, and his ceaseless passion to bring together innovators throughout Asia to raise the standards for all who call the continent home. Please join me in thanking, honoring, and welcoming Mr. Ronnie Chan. I want to thank China Institute for honoring me today. As I ponder upon the long history of this venerable organization with its many august leaders over long years, I must say that I'm truly humbled. Back in 1926, China was still a very weak and backward country, while the United States was already the strongest nation on earth. So I assume that at your founding, this institution was primarily for the benefit of China. But today, we live in a brave new world when both countries are quite strong. I do not recall a time in human history when there are two countries like that, when both are strong. Perhaps we have to go all the way back to the Han Dynasty of China 2000 years ago and during the Roman Empire days of Europe. Today, both countries have to live with each other for we all live in a small global village. I always believe that when that is the case, it is not enough to understand only each other's politics and economics. It is equally, if not more important, that we understand each other's history, language, culture, and the arts. There's no denying that China Institute has distinguished itself in all these areas. So whereas your work in 1926 was very significant, perhaps your work today is even more important for world peace hinges on the better understanding of these two wonderful countries. So I want to thank China Institute again 
In particular, I want to thank Didi, I want to thank Yusai, I want to thank James, as well as all the board members. All the best to you. Wow, what an extraordinary evening. What an amazing way to kickstart the Year of the Ox. You know, the Year of the Rat has presented a lot of challenges to all of us. I'm so looking forward to an auspicious new start with a strong and sturdy ox to support everything that we want to do in this coming year. I also want to look to you, each of you in the audience, for a big thank you for helping to support us at China Institute. For those of you who have VIP tickets, please stay online to go to the VIP rooms afterwards. For everybody else, a big thank you again for helping us to celebrate Chinese New Year and for helping to make China Institute come alive in your own home. Daja Xinian Hao. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of China Institute, we thank all our honorees, supporters, and guests from around the world for joining us and wish everyone a happy new year. Cheers. 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 Cheers! And from all of us at China Institute, Gong Xi Fa Cai. Cheers! Thank you everyone for attending the 2021 Blue Cloud Gala. Please consider making a contribution in support of China Institute's mission to advance a greater understanding of China through education, art, culture, and business programs. If you are attending the post-gala VIP reception, please see your inbox for the link sent to you earlier. The reception will begin on Zoom in five minutes. <laughs>